it's a need for a new world order. But it has different characteristics in different parts of the, of the world. The affirmative task we have now is, uh, is to actually um, uh, create uh, uh, a new world order. A world in which there is the very real prospect of a new world order. It's about the future of Europe and a new world order. After 1989, President Bush kept said, and it's a phrase that I often use myself, that we needed a new world order. And the hope that each of us has to build a new world order. The pieces are in flux. Soon they will settle again. Before they do, let us reorder this world around us. So that the problem of the Bush presidency will be the emergence of a new international order. Within the next four years, we will see the emergence of a new international the order. The beginning of a new international order. But today, with Asia already outproducing Europe, India and China are clearly becoming part of our new order. So, in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, a new world is emerging. It is a new world order with significantly different and radically new challenges. I think its task will be to develop an overall strategy for America in this period when really a new world order can be created. It's a great opportunity. It isn't just a crisis. That this crisis in the way that has developed will require some kind of a world governance. Good evening, everybody. President Obama and British Prime Minister Gordon today calling for a new world order to tackle our global economic crisis. And the president outlined his vision of a new world order in which the U.S. would participate fully. We've got to give them a stake in creating the kind of uh, uh, world order that I think all of us would like to see. So I see a uh, world order in the future with a multipolar uh, world order. I think a new world order is emerging, and with it the foundations of a new and progressive era of international cooperation. We have resolved that from today we will together manage the process of globalization to secure responsibility from all and fairness to all. And one of the ways it will drive the change is through global governance and global agreements. But in a globalized economy, we are going to have to take global responsibilities, and there going to, is going to have to be some semblance of global governance. Never before has a new world order had to be assembled from so many different perceptions, or on so global a scale. Nor has any previous order had to combine the attributes of the historic balance of power system with global democratic opinion and the exploding technology of the contemporary period. There also exists an extraordinary opportunity to form for the first time in history a truly global society. Hi guys, it's David, disciple Lord Jesus Christ, brother, be then baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of sins, and have received against the Holy Ghost, speaking with tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance. From that montage we just watched of all these people talking about the New World Order, I was going to show you a couple news articles just to show you that this is that very event that they were hoping for. I mean, they tried various other ways. They tried global warming, they tried climate change, and this is where we're at now. UN chief calls for immediate global ceasefire to fight coronavirus. Will coronavirus cause a ceasefire between Israel and Gaza? UN chief calls for immediate global ceasefire amid pandemic. See, we see them all pushing the same thing. UN Secretary calls for easing up sanctions on Iran, North Korea, and other fight coronavirus pandemic. UN shifts from climate change to coronavirus? How convenient. Because what? That's the agenda that's working right now? UN uh, chief calls for global ceasefire to help fight COVID-19. 